is a back to basics uh, cook on my spare ribs. Um, I may put a link to what encouraged me to go that way. Also, I want to give a uh, shout out to uh, Robert for reminding me that I have a smoke tube. And I used to use this in my Weber all the time, and I had bought some real nice uh, pellets to uh, give me some, some good smoke. But as you can see, the, the Lazari um, mesquite uh, that I have does a good job of smoking, and if I use the button uh, to warm things up like I've showed you in the past, I mean, just look how it pours out. And this stuff lights really easy. So it's not really like I need a lot of smoke, but I want to see how this is going to work, so that's kind of what the theme is, back to basics. So let me put a torch to this and then drop it into the smoke box. Simple as that. Lighting that up, I forgot exactly what uh, I was using, but it just, the wood smells sweet. It's a real, real nice aroma that I used to like to use in the Weber. So between the Weber pellets that are mystery at the moment, I can't remember, and uh, the Lazari smoke, let me push the button here for a minute to well, actually the fan didn't do any good at all because I had my blades in. So, now the fan is blowing it. And it's already turning blue, so that's, that's a good start. Anyway, so today I decided to uh, let you see what my uh, startup process was because I was going to be using the smoke tube and uh, before I forgot about uh, letting you know about it, I thought I'd just let you in on it. All right. Okay, today, uh, let me, now that I've got the fire going and with the uh, smoke that was uh, reminded to me by uh, Robert, I also am going to uh, go back to basics. Uh, I'm, cooking, uh, I'm cooking the uh, St. Louis style spare ribs uh, with salt and pepper. Uh, just a little bit of seasoning with it. Uh, it would be like a teaspoon added to whatever I was shaking on here. And again, no measurements. But you can see them here. So the, the membrane is off on this. I actually decided to remove the membrane as I, as, as I always would. Uh, I don't know if I always do, but anyway, I did. And I'm going to do two slabs, and it is smoking because it's. Uh, I allowed it to get up to temperature. And I'm cooking right now at 215. So I'm going to go 215 about four hours, and then I will then catch up uh, at that point by getting a temperature reading and figure out where I'm going to go. But I'm inspired. Uh, Jeremy over at Mad Scientist Cooking, I think. Uh, uh, anyway, link up here, link up here for also Robert. So I'll have uh, two links up here that inspired this cook. And what inspired me to go this way is I wanted to get back to basics and uh, do a taste test and get away from all of the uh, jazz of blueberry and, and Tennessee whiskey and all, you know, tequilas and stuff like that. Let me just get back to basic. So I want you to go over to Jeremy's channel to see what inspired this cook. And I'll just say goodbye right now. Go. And uh, if you watch his channel uh, on this particular cook that I'm doing right here, that's the inspiration of what I'm doing. So if you feel that you want to see them what somebody else did with Jeremy's cook idea, then come back and then understand that I'm going to be following what you just watched over there. So it's smoking well. I do have the uh, you know the smoke tube in there with the pellet of the 
real nice flavor. It's a hickory, I believe, that I that I have it in the smoke tube. But then I'm using my uh, Lazari uh, Mesquite Lump Charcoal in here, and it's smoking well. So at 215, these ribs should absorb all that smoke. I should get a real good smoke ring out of this, and that's a prediction. That's five hours from now. Who knows? But uh, anyway. I just wanted to say that I'm like you. I like to jump around and look at other channels. And in that I did look at other channels, and I, and I look at all the cooking channels, if I see something that I uh, wanna, wanna try, I, I will. But in this case, at least I'm, I'm, I'm at a point where I wanna make sure I give credit to these inspirational pieces so that everyone knows where it's coming from. Um, I think you'll like it. So. I'll say goodbye to you right now, and hopefully I'll see you later. I wanted to take this uh, second to kind of do a flashback on the last video where I was talking about that I have speakers up here. So I've got stereo speakers with a Bluetooth uh, receiving unit that my phone sends the music to, thus I get to listen to it here. So. I'm not sure that you can watch two separate deals with your smartphone, but if you're watching this on a laptop or a PC or a tablet, I believe you can open up a browser um, or at least multiple screens. So if you go to my playlist, you'll see a, a, I've got one in here called uh, My Cassette Tape. And that's uh, kind of like the music that I'm listening to while I'm out here. I would love to play it, but it's a no-no. Can't do that. So you can, though. You can go over to my playlist. Uh, probably I'm not demanding that you do that, you know, because you have your own music that you can be listening to. But uh, kind of to go along with the flavor of what I'm doing here, uh, I would invite you to uh, play that music in a separate screen and then click back over onto the YouTube part so you can watch the video. And basically that's kind of the music that I'm listening to except during these uh, shoots. And then once the uh, shoot is done, then I'm back to listening to that music. And uh, that would be my flavor of what's going on with the cook along with what I'm hearing. Just thought I'd share that. I'll leave the link up here. Um, it's been a little over two hours, and I uh, really haven't looked. Uh, it's been smoking nicely, as you can still see, so everything's going well. So I also hope you enjoyed going over and seeing the Mad Scientist's video, and um, stopping by and also seeing Robert's, where he was talking about the smoke tubes. With that being said, I appreciate the fact that you came back. So, one of the things that uh, the mad scientist was talking about was that you didn't need paprika. Um, the paprika being a finer dust, he's saying, kind of coats the meat to the point where the meat can't soak through. And it's like, well, possibly. But here, these are pretty darn red. These are really red right now, and I didn't use any paprika. My bacon on the bottom is coming close. It's uh, starting now to get crispy across the whole way. It's a slow cook of bacon. Interesting. So, uh, I'll probably start using that in about a half hour. I'm going to look at the meat one more time. Might as well let you let me see it. One of the things that uh, he was talking about on his uh, big cook there was that he looked at the meat and tried to look at the condition of the skin and it was starting to wrinkle up. So I found that interesting. Yeah, I can see where it will look like that. It doesn't look like it yet. And I haven't, uh, I haven't probed it for temperature because we're so early into the cook. Oh, I read it wrong. I was reading the temperature 209. And so the time is uh, two hours and 45 minutes, so it's kind of long. I, I want to go about four hours before I get into pulling the meat off and uh, wrapping it uh, for an hour. So, um, 
as I talk, I'm talking myself into checking. So I'm at 140, so I got a long ways to go. Hope that you're doing the music thing that I was talking about. Right now I'm uh, on Pink Floyd, uh, finding that kind of interesting. <laughs> okay, let's take a peek. Whoa! I think they're red. Let me get my thermometer here. It's 153, 155, 158, 146. Yeah, coming along nicely. So uh, even the even the bacon is just about there, and. We're three hours and 41 minutes into the cook and at 222. So, uh, still on plan. Okay. We are at four hours. Four hours. And it's getting dark. This is my light, so I don't think they're bright enough. When I put the meat into the, you know, the probe into the meat, it did not feel uh, cooked. So it's kind of cooler out here uh, than it's been. So I'm going to say I might want to push this closer to five hours before I wrap it. So basically this will be a six hour cook. Who knows? But at this point, uh, I don't want to rush it. I don't want to panic. I'm just going to cook it. And... Um, I think I might push up the temperature a little bit. Uh, it's at 225 at the moment, so if I went 250, uh, I don't think that would be panicking, but that's kind of what I'm up to. All right, well, it continues. Okay, so here's what we got. It should be in 4K, but it's looking really good, and it's starting to pull back on the bone. I think uh, everything here is telling me it's a good time to wrap it. So, it's starting to feel like midnight out here, it's so dark. Preserving the top of the look by not flipping it over.
juicy. And that's going to be a good thing. I wonder if you saw the same thing I did where it squirted up into the air like a little volcano. Take the heat up a little bit and uh, get this uh, a little uh, a little higher to pull this out of the stall. And I think that's going to happen pretty quick now that it's wrapped. Okay, that's the update. All right, let's find out what the temperature might be. Ten more minutes. And then I'm going to pull it. So that was it. Um, the meat definitely was in a stall. And then once it was wrapped, uh, and then kicking the heat up, uh, it blew right past the stall. And, and now we're getting up into the uh, 202. Uh, the first part of the meat that I looked at was like almost 204, 205. So uh, that means everything in there is melting pretty good. But the other end, it was still like 98 or something like that. So just going to give it, a, you know, that extra 10 minutes. And this is going to end up being too shy of six hours. So I could have done a 3 two, one but the thing about uh, only having it Absorbing the smoke for three hours and then wrapping it for two hours and then bringing it back out would uh, not necessarily uh, Give me as much of a smoke. Uh, I like that part of going at least four hours so I have the opportunity right now and that I want to go uh, a few more minutes to actually put a barbecue sauce on there Generally, I don't do that, but I'm kind of thinking tonight um, it's kind of like 8 o'clock, and so my wife's been waiting a few hours. It might actually be kind of nice to have a glaze on there. So let me go ahead and paint one of them up, and uh, I'll go from there. Oh boy. Eight more minutes. Alright, let's take a look. I don't know if it's gonna here it focused. It's shadows on it. Yeah, that's the way this light is at a, at a steep angle. Alright, so I'll pull this off, take it in the house and uh have different lighting in there and we'll take a look at uh, what the smoke ring is. All right, so this is the one that is natural. It's uh, no sauce on it. Came out really nice and here's the one where I glazed it. And yeah, let this breathe here for a few minutes and then I'll uh, slice into one of these. Okay, this is the one without the sauce, and it's just that the lights in here are so harsh, but um, 
you can definitely see the ring and as I squeeze it the juices just come right on up yeah I am happy with this cook thanks for uh, hanging around and seeing uh, how this came out if you have any questions uh, ask me down below I'll try to answer them and uh, I hope you found this video different and uh, sort of interesting and me sending you away to some other person's YouTube channel and hopefully uh, you coming back if you're hearing this you did so thanks very much a thumbs up or a subscribe would be really good I'd appreciate it so thank you again for uh, for sharing this with me have a good night take care Thank you.